Hey guys, it's Adam Skidmore here back with another tutorial video for Infestation. Uh, I just want to show you guys today how to make a character, how to navigate the marketplace, how to find a server, uh, what the community tab does and what it has inside of it, and uh, setting up the proper keybinds that are right for you as well as your graphic settings in the options menu. So let's get right into it. Let's make a character right now. You're going to select one of your empty character slots gonna come up here and you can come up with a name for it let's just name our uh, our character peanut brittle because man peanut brittle just tastes amazing uh, and then let's uh, give ourselves a little head maybe an upper body change and uh, some pants that blend in with the grass so we can be an assassin and then uh, if we wanted to dress up like a hunter like the chick uh, we could choose that as well, or perhaps a body style that we don't have right now, but we could unlock. And we could either unlock this with gold coins, or with game dollars from killing zombies in-game. If you don't have any gold coins, you can purchase GC. Uh, it's nice and simple, you just select buy, and then you can set that up online. It'll open a new window in your browser. Uh, but since we don't have any of these characters right now, let's just, let's just make Peanut Brittle right here. Peanut Brittle, he's an ex-military commando. Let's create this survivor. Oh no, the name's already in use. Well, if you run into the issue that somebody had the same great idea like you, like Peanut Brittle, you, know, you can just one-up them. Maybe put a third letter in there. Nobody will notice, and it'll be okay. Peanut Brittle lives on Triple T. He's the triple threat, Peanut Brittle. Anyways, now that we've got that all set up, let's take a look here at uh, basically what we've got under his account stuff. Uh, we've got experience, sur time survived, zombies killed, bandits killed, civilians killed, reputation, and the last seen location on the map. Since he's never been alive in the game before, he's got none of these and he's never been seen. So who knows where he's gonna be? He's gonna show up somewhere random. So we will have to see. Uh, his inventory right now though, he's given a flashlight, a bandage, a can of soda, and a granola bar. You also have access to your global inventory during this time. Uh, if you've been playing the game and you do have a couple items or you've purchased items in the marketplace which we'll go over in a second but you could then say outfit your brand new character if you've already been back to a safe zone in the game with items and deposited them in your inventory for access. The first time when a character dies as well as a fresh spawned character can always access their global inventory from the menu. Once you've already spawned in the game, though, you no longer have access to that global inventory unless you go to a safe zone. But if a character's died and it counts as a fresh resurrection, if you've just revived the character, and as long as he has not spawned into the game, you can always take items in and out of your inventory if you haven't decided what to put on him. Let's take this Scar CQC right here and we'll put this on him. Since he's a brand new character, but we've already got some items in our inventory. Then, let's navigate over here to the marked place. Well, since we've already got some GC and some game dollars, you can see that everything in the store is purchased with game dollars. So since we've put on a weapon, I know that it uses Stenag 30 in it, so let's end up buying some ammo. Nice and simple, you can just buy the item, and what will end up happening from the store is it will end up going into your global inventory, into the ammo section. And so since we bought some Stenag 30s, we can then take these Stenag 30s, oh, where are they? Oh. They're in my stack of 75, since these are low ammo stenags. Um, and let's put two on our character. And so now our fresh spawned character has two stenag 30s and a weapon, since we'd already found a weapon prior. But that is only if you have access to your GI, which you should for a brand new character, or if the character's died. So it helps with both. But always remember that. Let's go over skill tree really quick. Um, basically, since this is peanut brittle here, um, and if you had any experience, you could then purchase these skills. But as you can see, we have no experience, so it says learn these skills. We can't do it. We don't have any of the precursors, unfortunately. But these are basically just perks for the game. You've got a physical tree, a weapons tree, a survival tree, and then these trees will be coming soon. This is, this is the handyman repair tree, gunsmith tree, and weapon degradation tree. Uh, so that basically ends up covering our characters and a little bit of the marketplace and uh, GC. Just keep in mind if you have purchased GC and you do want to convert it into blue dollars, you can then just click the blue dollars and select the amount of GC that you would like to convert into game dollars. Uh, moving on, let's go over here to community really quickly and 
and basically the community section has two different tabs one being clans which has clan creation joining clans and leaving clans as well as leaderboards which tracks the top players in the game for experience time survived zombies killed survivors killed bandits killed heroes and the villains of the game uh, if you wanted to create a clan it's as simple as just coming in here and creating a clan however you must have a minimum of 20 hours played in the game in order to create a clan with a character. So since this is a brand new character, we would not be able to create the clan. However, clan creation is free. So feel free to invite your friends. Uh, let's go over here into the options menu really quickly and go over our video settings. Basically, you'll want to set your resolution up so that it's native with your resolution on the desktop uh, for best performance. Uh, I personally like to set my overall quality to custom, which allows me to manually set all these settings. However, you may end up liking a predetermined set, which is ultra, high, medium, and low, and custom. So as you can see, when you're in these other settings besides custom, it ends up locking a lot of the shaders uh, and textures. So I personally like to set it myself. Um, you can set up your audio volume here under sound volume, as well as music, if you enjoy the music in game. Moving on, we've got controls. If you want to change anything with your sensitivity, I personally like an ultra low sensitivity as well as no mouse acceleration. Uh, and then you'll just come over here into movement and rebind any of these keys accordingly. Um, if you've played any other shooters, you'll be very familiar with the keys. Uh, primary fire being left mouse button, aim, iron sight being right mouse button, move forward being W, move backward being S, move left A and D, sprint being shift, jump as control and crouch, or jump as space and crouch as control. Uh, prone being Z and E for interact. Very, very standard FPS bind layout. Uh, auto run being the numlock key. But of course, you can rebind any of these as simple as just clicking on it, pressing whichever key you'd like to bind it to, and voila, you can set the key. Once you're done doing these settings, just hit apply. It will ask for confirmation, yes, and move on. If you need to switch a language, as simple as language, and if you want to use the VoIP in-game, you can. You just need to first turn on the chat, uh, decide if you want chat bubbles on, set your voice chat volume, and make sure you set the input and the output devices. Once you've done that, you should be all set to play the game. Hopefully you'll be familiar with your keybinds. If not, feel free to rebind them as I demonstrated. You'll take Peanut Brittle here, or whichever character you've made, and select the play game. From here, you'll be presented with eight different options, one of them being grayed out since we are not a trial account. But basically, you can see the official servers, which are official servers owned and operated by OP, as well as private servers, which are privately run by players, uh, as well as premium servers, which offer double loot experience, as well as increased experience per kill from zombies, as well as increased loot spawns, as well as increased uh, likeliness of gaining game dollars from zombies. Uh, strongholds, which are a map set which can use harvesting tools, and you can use special items to build on this map and create walls and small forts for you and your friends to uh, play on. Basically, this is a much smaller map experience on strongholds. Uh, and much quicker and faster paced and no loot items actually spawn on strongholds. They're more of a PvP centered gameplay. Uh, the official servers have the Colorado map. Public test environments is anything that is on the test environment, uh, upcoming patches and the like. Official veteran servers then require a minimum of 300 plus hours if you only want to play with veteran, veterans of the survival genre. And then lastly, my servers which would be rented servers. Uh, so let's just come on over here into official servers and we'll select a server. You can see that you can select the region under this little bubble menu and just select Europe, Russia, or South America. Once you've done that, you can apply any filters you'd like or any server options and hit apply and it will then change the server. As you can see under server name, it is then changed to EU from the regular US or Russia, RU, and South America. So once you've decided which region you want to play in, selecting a server is as simple as just scrolling through the list and taking any server, US Server 19, let's say here, and then clicking Join Server, and you should be on your way into playing the game. And I suggest you taking out, I suggest you checking out one of the basics videos on how to play once you're in the game. Uh, thank you for watching.